Chat! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an automatic firing system for one of these foam dart blaster guns. Okay, three, two, one, adia! Now, this is a project from my book, and there's more information on that in the description. But materials of which you are going to need to create this wonderful project are wood, two different sizes would be ideal, some screws, 12 volt linear actuator, I'll explain where you get those when we come to that bit, uh, some cable, some M4 threaded bar, and with some nuts and washers and bits and bobs, uh, some little cable block connectors, uh, Jubilee clip or zip ties. Some tape, some string, a little little red switch or a switch of some sort, and then we need some batteries and some battery holders. Right, let's get cracking. Okay, now first thing we need to do is make a base. Now you can make the base out of any piece of wood you like, but I'm gonna use these little strips of wood because these are the easiest things for most people to buy. Sheets of ply are obviously quite difficult to cut around, so we're gonna go with this. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do two lengths, 30 centimeters, and three lengths, 20 centimeters. <laughs> Right, so we've got our two 30 centimetre bits and our three 20 centimetre bits. Now we screw them together to make the base. That's got the base side. So next job, we need to work out how we can stick this to our base. So, got a bit of 20 by 20 wood and then we're gonna attach that to the side. Now it needs to stick out over the back to house our little uh, servo solenoidy unit thingy. Now depending on what model of these you've got, you might be able to mount that somewhere else. But for this to be a more universal how-to, I found that hanging out the back seems to work with all models. Now to attach this piece of wood, I found the best way is either Jubilee clips or zip ties. Now depending on again what model you've got, depending on how wobbly the, uh, the gun is depending on how well this sits and what you might have to do is get like a little piece of screw with some washers or something and just screw it into the right distance just to make sure this sits flat up against it. So let's get that fixed on, show you to do that. Right, that's got it attached onto there, nice and solid. Now the next job is to attach our actuator to the end of the piece of wood. Now these actuators are actually off uh, car central locking door systems. You know, when you uh, click your car to open it up and the little tag pops it up, it's this which pops it up. Now obviously you can't just go around to most local shops and buy these, but they are available online and they are very cheap, so that's all good. Now before we fix it, we just need to alter it slightly because these holes in the side here are not quite big enough, so we're going to drill them out. Right, so I've drilled that out with a 4mm drill, because we need to mount this under here, and then we need to get our M4 threaded bar, and then you can imagine that, through the holes, there'll be a little nut and bolt on the end, and then we need to suspend it, kind of level with the trigger really, so look at where your trigger is, work that out, that's going to sit about there, and then we need to chop it off somewhere around there. Yeah. I'm not going to do it on the floor though, am I? got that fixed on there very tightly nicely nicely now the balance point of this is pretty much just on the handle so that's where we want to put a piece of wood down here which holds it up in the air now that piece of wood wants to be long enough so when the uh, magazine cartridge is in it sticks out below it so we can kind of you know we can tweak the angle slightly to wherever we want it if it was too short then the end of the magazine would end up bashing on the uh, on the base so we don't want that so we're going to fix that up 
on there and then we can screw that down onto the base and then we're kind of there in terms of holding it where it wants to be and then we've just got to wire up our little actuator. Righty ho! Right, that's got it mounted on our piece of wood and the little nut which I shoved up on the screw up here that's to kind of take up a little bit of the length because my screw was too long and it would have gone through both pieces of wood stuck out the other side and possibly started going into my blaster. So that little nut just takes the extra length. Now then, you can do it up tight but you don't want it massively tight because you want to be able to alter the trajectory so you can uh, you know, adjust where you fire it. Now next thing is the firing bit. We need to attach the actuator to the trigger and very simply what we're going to do is tie a little bit of string because there's a little loop around the end here. It's going to go over the trigger, come back again and then we can either tie it back onto the, that end piece or one of these uh, little threaded bits here. It doesn't really matter as long as so when we put some current through this it pulls it back and it pulls a bit of string and fires the darts. Right, it's exciting. That's that all rigged up. Now this is a fully automatic version which means there's a little secondary trigger just under here to start the motor which fires the darts off. Now you could put another bit of string around that but what I have found is they don't push in as much so they take less string to actually pull them on. So if you did them both at the same thing off the same actuator then it would pull that one all the way in but not the other one and then it wouldn't probably fire. So just get an elastic band or a hair band or something and then have that ready underneath it and then when you want to use it just flick it round That'll hold the trigger in, the motor starts running, and off you go. It's not great for battery life, but it does work. Now the electric's dead simple, just two wires, and there's no actual polarity, so it doesn't matter which way round you get them, other than it will make it go in or out. So if they say the green one's the plus one, it might send it out, and if you make the blue one the plus one, it will kind of retract in. But don't worry about that just yet. Just need to get our little cable connectors, snip that down so it's uh, two and not three or however many you've got on your, your row of them. And then we can screw that to the side here, put the cables into it and then we can work from there onwards off to our switch and battery. up if you can find yourself a 12 volt battery you'll only need one but these are a little bit pricey so always thinking of the pennies we're going to try and do it with two 9 volts now obviously 9 volt is not 12 volt and one 9 volt battery will not operate this so we need to use two so we're going to mount two and then you connect the red wire from one directly to the black wire of another one so you're connecting them together in series which will make 18 volts won't be super high amps but it's enough to operate this let's do that first Put a bit of tape on there, give a bit of protection. Right, now to wire it up is very simple. Uh, the best way I think I can describe this or explain it, you've got a big long bit of cable, you're going to have two ends. Now I've got two core cable here, so there's, a, there's two wires. Put one end, two wires in the actuator, and then the other two wires are going to be for your switch. Now obviously there's no battery connected at the moment, so what we're going to do is at any point down the cable, we can just cut one of the wires peel it out, trim the ends up, and then connect our battery, positive and minus, to those wires. Doesn't matter which way round we go, until we push the button and find out if we're firing this in or out, if we think we're doing it the wrong way round, then you just swap the cables round at that end.
Right, that's got it all wired up. Now put this bit of tape over here, just kind of keep the cables together. Normally I don't like tape, but I'm willing to accept it in this circumstance. Now the last bit, which is the switch at the end. Now you could just touch the wires together, that would work, but that's not very rock and roll, is it? No. So, I've got one of these little switches from an electronic store. Now you want a momentary switch, so it only uh, works when it's depressed. Huh, <laughs> depressed. It's not depressed though, is it? It's, you know, when it's pressed, Colin. Now, these actually take spade connections, which is like a little plastic piece which you put over and then you can crimp on it with a special tool. Now, if you haven't got that special tool, there's always a little hole normally in the connections and you can just put the wire through that hole and then just coil it round, wrap it round itself. It's not ideal, it's not the most perfect electrical connection, but for what we're doing here, it should be fine. So if we do that on both of them, like so, and then all we need to do now is to put it in something, because you know, not very professional, does it? Okay, budget blown. Toilet roll, scissors, slit up there, and then we're gonna wrap it round our switch. Because ideally, we'd like to put this in a piece of pipe, but of course not everyone has the perfect piece of pipe laying around in their house. However, you do all have a toilet roll. So wang that round there, and then you have to kind of coil it up, like so, nice and tight. And we get a bit of tape, we're gonna tape it in. It's not pretty but it does function. Perfect. Now let's just give it a paint job. I'm gonna give it a test with the boys. Awesome fun. Now this is one of 10 projects which you can find in my book. Now as well as all sorts of things about me and all the previous stuff I've built and done and invented, there is 10 projects in there. There are step-by-step -step guides which will take you through each of these process. Some of them have build videos like this. So there we are. Now it's out 7th of September. There's a link at the end of the video that you can click on if you can either pre-order it or order it depending on what the date you watch this is. But come on, get involved, buy it, your kids will love it. You can get them into building stuff, get them into making projects of their own. Excellent, what more do you want? See you in the next video.